Louis Vuitton, a name that often comes to mind with a mere mention of luxury, currently flaunts a jaw-dropping valuation of over $40 billion. But the journey to get there wasn't an easy and quick ride for this luxury brand. The tale of Louis Vuitton is a roller coaster of tears and cheers. This is the story of a little boy who started from odd jobs, hustling through the twists and turns, and ultimately establishing one of the most loved brands in the world. But how did a poor boy pave his way to build a fortune from nothing? Join us as we dig into the life of one of the most influential people in the history of luxury brands. But before we jump in, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to never miss an update about our new uploads. Louis Vuitton was born in 1821 in Anche, France. However, right from the start, Louis Vuitton faced tragedy after tragedy in his earlier life. He used to live an impoverished life, barely meeting ends. At age 10, he bid farewell to his mother, and to add a twist of drama, his father remarried. This was just the beginning of a struggling childhood for Louis Vuitton. After losing his mother, Louis came under the guardianship of his stepmother, who mistreated him, making his life more miserable than it already was. Soon after, tragedy struck again. When post his mother's departure, his father joined her in the great beyond. That's when he decided to leave his home and move somewhere. After leaving his home in Anche at the age of just 13 in 1835, he moved to Paris, a city 292 miles or 470 kilometers away from his hometown. This long journey wasn't easy, but it was a necessary one. He had dreams that would eventually become a reality in the bustling city of Paris. Louis picked up a bag of skills along the way and had to do several menial jobs to earn his living. Louis was working hard on these menial jobs at the time when France was recovering from the Napoleon Wars. It was the period of the Industrial Revolution. Louis Vuitton used to work during the day as a craftsman and sleep at night under the open sky with just a single cloak to safeguard him from cold nights. During this phase of the Industrial Revolution, trains were just introduced as a means of transportation in France. And this medium of transportation changed the way people traveled. On their journeys, people needed something to stash their stuff, enter boxes, or as we know them, suitcases. All of a sudden, every other person set for long journeys needed these sturdy and robust boxes or suitcases to keep the goods inside them safe and secure. This gave birth to a new industry, bags and suitcases. Louis Vuitton was among the first handful of people who saw this opportunity and began polishing his craftsmanship skills to create strong and reliable suitcases made of leather but he still needed to find work in order to get his hands on as many bags as possible. And he eventually did find work. Monsieur Maréchal, a big shot of the trunk-making industry, hired Louis Vuitton as an apprentice in 1837. And this was the opportunity Louis Vuitton desperately sought. What's more incredible is that he didn't waste this golden opportunity, but leveraged it to become one of the most skilled craftsmen in Paris eventually. His reputation grew exponentially among the upper class, and people preferred buying products crafted by Louis Vuitton. After the re-establishment of the French Empire by Napoleon III, something happened that Louis Vuitton never even imagined. Empress of the French, Eugénie de Montijot, was so impressed with Louis Vuitton's work that she hired him as her personal box maker. And from then on, Louis Vuitton never looked back. In 1854, Louis Vuitton founded a brand after his own name, Anier sur Seine, which focused on redesigning carrying boxes to solve a grave problem associated with travel luggage at the time, and his weapon? Canvas. Canvas was a lightweight, durable, and water-resistant material that provided an excellent alternative to leather. At the time, luggage boxes were made of leather, and to allow rainwater to slide over their tops, their upper surfaces were crafted in a curved shape. Now, it was an issue. The trains used to stack these boxes one over the other in the luggage compartments. However, the curved design made these boxes unsuitable for stacking over each other. So, Louis Vuitton changed the design and made the top sides of the boxes flat but using canvas, which was water resistant and didn't require a curved surface. This allowed for these boxes to be stacked over each other. The design and quality of Louis Vuitton's boxes became very popular among the elite of the time, and the brand's popularity soared in no time. After revolutionizing people's perception of luggage boxes, Louis Vuitton shifted his focus to handbags. Handbags were considered bulky and uncomfortable for women at the time, but Louis Vuitton knew that handbags had the potential to become a necessary fashion article. Using canvas, Louis Vuitton successfully crafted handbags that were embraced by society, and soon, women demanded more variety in designs so that they could match them with their outfits. As the demand for Louis Vuitton products grew over time, Vuitton asked for assistance from his son, 
Georges Vuitton. Keeping up with his father's legacy, Georges Vuitton contributed to the brand's innovative approach to redefining the fashion industry. As the popularity and demand for Louis Vuitton's products grew, there came a tragic turning point that brought Louis Vuitton right back to where he started. In 1870, the Franco-Prussian War erupted, and it spread to arnier sur seine and forced the Vuitton family to leave their home and business and move to Paris in search of shelter. After living one year in a shelter, the Vuitton family returned to arnier sur seine after the end of the war, only to find out that their workshop had been looted and destroyed. The workers had also left the shop. This left Louis Vuitton shocked and devastated because he had lost a business built with his sweat and blood. Although devastated, Louis Vuitton found the courage to start from scratch again. With the remaining wealth and leftovers, Louis Vuitton set out to find a new location for his new shop. Within months of reopening, Louis Vuitton witnessed a thriving business in the city. Soon, orders started flooding in from around the world, and Louis Vuitton became a brand name associated with emperors and rulers around the world. After successfully establishing its reputation as France's most luxurious fashion brand, Louis Vuitton opened another shop in London in 1885 to cater to its growing client base. However, Louis Vuitton died at the age of 70 in 1892 due to a severe and aggressive brain cancer called glioblastoma. As the curtain fell on the life of Louis Vuitton, a new chapter unfolded in the hands of his son, Georges Vuitton. Stepping into the daunting shoes left by his father, Georges embarked on an ambitious journey to transform the company into a global brand. In 1893, Georges Vuitton took the brand to new heights by showcasing its highly successful products at the Chicago World's Fair, marking the beginning of Louis Vuitton's international acclaim. The pivotal year of 1896 witnessed the birth of the iconic monogram canvas, a signature product from Louis Vuitton that defined the brand's identity and secured worldwide patents. Georges drew inspiration from the late Victorian era's fascination with Japanese Mon designs including graphic symbols like quatrefoils and flowers. Along with the legendary LV monogram, these design elements not only became synonymous with luxury, but also helped the brand deal with counterfeiters. Fueling the global expansion, Georges Vuitton went on a journey across the United States in 1896, captivating audiences in cities like New York, Philadelphia, and Chicago with some of the most eye-catching products of Louis Vuitton. By 1913, the popularity of Louis Vuitton reached new heights. This colossal travel goods emporium stood as a testament to the brand's global prominence. The 1930s witnessed the introduction of the Keeple Bag, an epitome of elegance in luggage design. In 1932, the iconic Noe Bag made its debut, originally crafted for champagne vintners, proving that utility could seamlessly blend with style. The timeless Louis Vuitton Speedy Bag also graced the fashion scene during this era leaving an indelible mark on the world of luxury. However, in 1936, the reigns of this flourishing empire passed to the next Vuitton scion, Gaston Louis Vuitton, as Georges Vuitton died peacefully at the age of 79. Amidst the glamour of Louis Vuitton's rise to fashion supremacy lies a chapter veiled in shadows, a wartime saga that unfolds in the unsettling backdrop of World War II. During the German occupation of France, the Vuitton family found themselves entangled in a complex dance with the Nazis, a revelation that adds a dark undertone to the brand's storied history. The revelations come from the pages of Louis Vuitton, a French saga, a gripping account penned by French journalist Stephanie Bonvicini. The narrative unearths a disturbing alliance between the Vuitton family and the Vichy government led by Marshal Philippe Pétain, shedding light on how their business affairs flourished under the fascist occupation. The family's involvement went beyond mere collaboration. They established a factory dedicated to crafting artifacts that glorified Peyton, churning out over 2,500 busts venerating the wartime leader. The controversial story, however, met with resistance from the Vuitton camp. While not outright denying the historical facts, a spokesperson for LVMH, the conglomerate that now encompasses Louis Vuitton, dismissed it as ancient history, emphasizing that the mentioned period predates their ownership. The saga raises questions that linger between the seams of luxury and wartime collaboration. The brand, now an emblem of modernity, faced scrutiny over its past affiliations. By the late 70s, Louis Vuitton was raking in some serious cash, with annual revenue soaring to 70 million francs. That's around 14.27 million US dollars. The brand set its eyes on the global stage, popping up in Japan with stores in Tokyo and Osaka in 1978 
Fast forward to the 80s and Louis Vuitton wasn't just about bags, they were sailing into the luxury goods empire. The 80s weren't just about shoulder pads and neon, it was when Louis Vuitton joined forces with Moet at Chandon and Hennessy, forming LVMH, the ultimate luxury goods squad. Profits skyrocketed, and by 89, Louis Vuitton was flexing its fashion muscle in 130 stores worldwide. In the 21st century, the company continued on the path to success and became one of the most luxurious brands in the world, something Louis Vuitton had always envisioned. Louis Vuitton ruled the luxury brand charts in 2019, bagging the top spot in Brand Z's list with a whopping worth of $47.2 billion. Louis Vuitton now stands as a multi-billion dollar company and proves that dreams can indeed become reality with hard work, consistency, and courage. And that was all about today's video. If you enjoyed our video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel. Share this video with someone who shares your love for Louis Vuitton. We'll be back soon with another exciting video.